six times before it goes click. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's what you meant. He said, the Lord opened the eyes of the blind. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserves the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked... He turneth upside down. The way of the wicked, He turneth upside down. And I'm just going to preach for a little bit on living life upside down. Living life upside down. Let's just go before the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for you invading this house today. This is your house. You're welcome here anytime and all times, Father. Have your will and have your way every day in this house, Lord. Have your way today, Jesus. And on our ears to hear, Father, you gave me this word for somebody. I pray, oh God, that it find a lodging place deep in the recesses of our mind and spirit and heart, that it would quicken us, oh God, and stir us today. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. I, I thank you for those you healed today. It's done. We thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for the moving and stirring of your spirit and for the angels that are here among us today. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. May be seated in Jesus' name. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. So who are the wicked? The word is rasha. It means morally wrong, a bad person, condemned, guilty, ungodly, wicked man that did wrong. And it comes from the word rasha, which means to be wrong, to disturb, or to violate. In other words, the wicked are those who live in sin. Those who are ungodly, Guilty, condemned to death by their sin. For the wages of sin is death. And such were some of us. But God didn't intend it to be that way. When God created us, He created us with perfection. 
And the first of us were Adam and Eve. They walked with God and they talked with God and they, they had a constant awareness of His presence and they excitedly anticipated the arrival of His voice walking in the cool of the garden to greet them and to fellowship with them. And He gave them authority and dominion over every living thing. And He gave them complete access to all vegetation and fruit with only one exception. The fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And somehow they managed to let the influence of another voice, another opinion, another presence in the garden to cause them to trade away everything for one thing that was forbidden. A curtain of darkness fell between them and their Creator. And their awareness and their excitement of Him was replaced with guilt and fear and torment. And even though Adam and Eve had each other, there was still an incredible void in their minds and in their hearts with all that they were exposed to suddenly stripped away and they found their world rocked. And now they were living life as though it had turned upside down. Adam tried to cover his sin, his shame with some vegetation, but God declared that the innocent blood of the Lamb was necessary for the, in order to cover that sin. Adam went on to have a few children, the first of which was named Abel, who had paid close attention to his dad's approach to God. He had noticed that he took a sacrifice that required blood and he followed suit and it was accepted. And the Bible basically tells us that Abel was in good standing with God. But there was another son and his name was Cain. And Cain didn't want to learn anything from his father. He said, i got to do it my way. And he simply ended up by doing it his way, repeating the same foolish error of his father by trying to offer a sacrifice of vegetation from a cursed ground. Instead of obeying God's command, the Bible says he was called the wicked seed. The wicked seed. Cain's envy and his jealousy, his anger, and finally his bitterness led him to slay his brother. He became the first murderer on earth. And five generations later, his seed Lamech became the second murderer on earth. And Cain's seed would go on to become inventors of musical instruments and various arts and other entertainment as they tried desperately to fill the void of God while they were living their life upside down. God offered comfort to Adam and Eve and gave them another son named Seth. And he also obeyed and kept the commandment of the Lord. And his fifth seed was Enoch. Who had this testimony. That he walked with God. And because he pleased God. God pulled him out of this earth. And took him into a heavenly place to be with him. And the eighth seed was Noah whom God gave the blueprints and commanded him to build an ark, which he did, and it saved Noah and his family from the flood that destroyed a very wicked humanity when the earth was full of people whose hearts and minds were on evil continually, thinking only of themselves, mocking the only preacher on earth and the only church that was in existence that could possibly save them all because they were living life upside down. They were opposing themselves. What they thought was right was wrong. Isaiah chapter 24, 1 through 5 and 17 through 20. The scripture says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied. 
and utterly spoiled. For the Lord hath spoken His word. The earth mourned and faded away. The world languished and faded away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Verse 5, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. In other words, the wicked inhabitants made the earth want to vomit. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Verse 17, fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. You can run, but you can't hide. For the windows from on high are open. And the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. Proverbs 26, 11 says, A dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. There was a song when I was a young man that was released in 1993 by a group called Truth. And it was titled, this very title, Living Life Upside Down. And I, I can't get this out of my spirit, so I'm just going to read to you the lyrics to the song. I wish I could sing it for you. <laughs> You probably don't. <laughs> Verse 1 says, John has a new way of looking at life. He's tired of his job, of his kids, and his wife. He says the secret to his success was in leaving and finding himself. And now he's someone to somebody else. And it goes into a bridge that says, You say we've riven, risen to a new age of truth. You're calling it a spiritual, godly pursuit. But the chorus says, But I say, what if we've fallen to the bottom of a well, thinking we've risen to the top of the mountain? What if we're knocking at the gates of hell, thinking we're heaven bound? What if we're, we spend our lives thinking of ourselves when we should have been thinking of each other? And what if we should reach up to only touch the ground to find we're living life upside down? Verse 2 says, we've got a program for saving the earth. This is 1993, 25 years ago. We've got a program for saving the earth while unborn children are denied their right to birth. One baby is blessed while another one's cursed. Well, have we made this world better or worse? Now that the life of a tree comes first. You say we've risen to a new age of life. You're telling me what used to be wrong is now right. But I say, what if we fall into the bottom of a well thinking we've risen to the top of the mountain? What if we're knocking at the gates of hell thinking we're heaven bound? What if we spend our lives thinking of ourselves when we should have been thinking of each other? What if we reach up to touch the ground to find we're living life upside down. I don't know about you, but there was a point in my life where I was living life upside down. What I thought was right in my own eyes was really completely wrong. What felt good and the world pushes it. If it feels good to you, do it. There's nothing wrong with what you feel. you got to be good to yourself. you got to take care and pamper yourself. you got to pet your little God. You're a God. You don't need God. Whatever seems right to you is right. There's no more truth. It's relative truth. Whatever truth is in your relative situation, it's okay to lie if you're under pressure. It's okay to lie if you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. It's okay to... No. You're living life 
upside down. It's, it's wrong side up. What if we're knocking at the gates of hell thinking we're heaven bound? 2 Timothy 2, 15-21 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God and workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ get away from sin, get away from wickedness, get away from iniquity. If you name the name of Christ, what is the name of Christ? Not Christian. His name is Jesus. Christ is what he was. Christ means Messiah, Savior. His name is Jesus. He said, if you name the name, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. How do you get away from iniquity? Mark 16, 15 through 17, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Don't tell me what our baptism isn't necessary for salvation. The scripture says, if you believe, you'll be baptized and you can be saved. If you don't want to be baptized, you can be saved. I didn't say that. Jesus did. He said, and these signs shall follow them to believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Tongues ain't for the church. Oh, yes. It's for the church. It's how you know you've been born in the church. Don't be quiet on me. Yeah. This will be the hundredth time you've heard this. <laughs> Luke 24. I guess silence is agreement to how that works. <laughs> Luke 24, 45-49. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is, uh, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria unto the othermost parts of the earth. And a very familiar portion of Scripture, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. The day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Where was the one place? Jerusalem, the upper room. They were together there. They obeyed God. They went where He said go, and they stayed when He said stay. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes, you have to speak in tongues. Come on. Try it. Come on. Try it. It's hard. Didn't make sense to me one day either. And then Peter starts preaching. What did he tell him? Go preach repentance in my name. Peter starts preaching. He gets to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He says, Then Peter said to them, Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for this promise, the promise that was coming to you in Jerusalem. My father said, Here it is, right here, Acts 2 38. This promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly did what? Received his word, were baptized. That's the problem right there. 
In a world that's living upside down, they have trouble receiving the word of truth because they're bound by their deceptions. You can call this reality all you want to, but this life and all that you can see and smell and touch and feel is only a blink of an eye compared to all eternity. If there's anything deceptive, it's what life shows you right now compared for the rest of the age. Oh, do what feels good now. Trust me. You want to do that? And that's all the little bit of fun you're going to get. And all of eternity is this little blink called life mm -hmm. on earth. Sin is joyful and pleasing for just a little season. For a moment. For a moment. John 3, 3-8 three says, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't even see it. The word see also means understand. You can't even understand the kingdom of God unless you're born again of the Spirit. It doesn't even make sense to you. Why? Because you're living life upside down. What would make sense to you is not going to make sense. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot even enter the kingdom of God. You can't see it, and you certainly can't even get into it without being born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is the spirit marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You are not born of the Spirit unless you make a sound when the Spirit comes. And the word sound is phone, which means language. Unless you talk in tongues, baby, the Holy Ghost never came. Come on. You can't see it because you're on the outside looking in. You don't want to see it because you're living life upside down. Come on. This world needs deliverance in a mighty way. Acts chapter 19. Oh, just believe, just believe, just believe. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is believe. That him that name of the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And he that believeth and is baptized. John, I'm sorry, Acts 19, 1 through 6, Paul ran into a few Baptists. <laughs> My grandparents were Baptists once. <coughs> Acts 19, 1 through 6, it came to pass that, wow, or at least one of them was. And it came to, i got to make sure I speak truth I get myself in trouble. <laughs> and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Is it believing enough? No. Believe means completely and totally committed to. Wholly committed to. If you believe and are baptized, you'll be saved. If you don't and you won't, you're not. You ain't. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He heard about it. And remember, I've taught you before, this was 20 years after Pentecost. 20 years. These good old Baptists, they were doing the best they knew to follow what John taught them. They hadn't even heard about the Holy Ghost in 20 years. With all that went down in Jerusalem and Samaria. They hadn't even heard about it. And they were just going along living what they knew. But the key word that Paul brought to them was, do you remember what your teacher taught you? That there was going to be one that came after him that was greater than he was? And they're going, oh, you know John? You know, you, you know my pastor, the Baptist pastor John? You know him? Yeah, I even know what he said. He said you should believe on the one who comes after him. Don't stay where you are. There's more. He said, unto what then were you baptized? In 
And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That should say they were rebaptized. I've had to be baptized more than once because I came to a revelation that that first way wasn't the right way. It wasn't the complete way. It was the beginning. But it didn't finish the work because it requires blood. And when Jesus gave His blood on Calvary, the, the heavens were rocking, the storms were rolling, the rain was falling as His blood drifted down off that cross and went into the earth. The waters of the rain washed it all into the seas and the, and the valleys. And maybe it was caught up with uh, precipitation or evaporation and got into the skies. And so His blood is literally in the water. The Creator's blood went into the water. Why is it then that you must be baptized calling on the name of the Lord because His name is the authority that releases the blood out of the water that covers your sin? i got to have His name! If I'm going to depart from iniquity, I've got to go down in His name! i got to go down in His name. He's got to flip my life right side up. I've been living all this time upside down. My thinking's been backwards. My understanding's been skewed. Even though I had a religion, even though I had some faith, it's still twisted and perverted because I'm looking through a glass, a glass darkly. Come on. You don't see it all. Come on. But if you hunger and thirst after Him, He'll meet you. He'll meet you. Listen to Acts chapter 17. Now when they, Paul and Silas, had passed through, I love these words, and Anthropolis, that's my best guess, and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and rise risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is... Christ, and uh, this is me, okay? I kind of get frustrated when people always put Christ as his last name. That's just me. I get a little offended when people don't say my daddy's name right. Don't disrespect my daddy. All I can ever hear in my spirit is Jesus the Christ. Jesus was what we needed. But He was the Christ. He was the Messiah. His last name isn't Christ. His name is Jesus. And that says it all. Jehovah has become our salvation. They should call Him Emmanuel. For He will dwell with His people. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women. Not a few. I mean, there's a lot. They said things backwards, baby. Not a few. There's a lot. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy. They don't fell into Cain's trap. They moved with envy against their brother. Took unto them certain lewd fellows now, I've looked that word up. Lewd fellows of the base or sort. That just means they were brute beasts, ruffians, callous men, known for being rough. They were the gangs back in the day. Maybe there was a mafia in there. I don't know. Rough. And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason. And sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received. And this all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. They turned their world upside down. Because everything they did was contrary to what they understood. Why? Because they were looking through a glass door and they couldn't understand the kingdom of God because they weren't in it. They couldn't understand how to get in it. But these men come and speaking truth and demonstrating the power of God, healing people and blinded eyes. You know, they had to go, we can't deny this. And they're talking about one king. His name 
Jesus. Amen. He's not even here, but his name makes stuff happen. Lord, come on, Lord, come on, Lord, Jesus. When you're having a conversation and I'm not there, all you gotta do is say my name and my image pops into your head. Come on. Your name represents you. It goes before you. It goes places where you can't even get. You're limited by this flesh. But you let the name be spoken. And there's a connection that takes place in the spirit. That's why I can be miles away. And someone gossiping and backbiting about me. And suddenly I feel, a, I feel a twinge in my spirit. I need to pray. I need to intercede. I need to repent. I need to pray for the church. Somebody's tearing at me. The same is true when you talk about Jesus. Oh, he, he, he left in bodily form, but He came to dwell in us. And when two or three are gathered together in His name, what are they doing? They're talking about Jesus. And suddenly, He walks through the walls. Come on. Come on. Walls don't keep Him back. That's right. Walls can't prevent Him. Come on. Oh, we're living life upside down. Our flesh can't go through the wall. I was going to go harder, but I didn't want to hurt myself. <laughs> but Jesus, he just come back one day. It would be cool if I could do this, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, this is your wall. Jesus just all of a sudden pops in there. Uh -huh. come on. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Thomas. I'm not going to believe this. I put my fingers in Holes of his wrists and his hands. Right. I don't believe unless I see the holes in his feet. But Jesus just walked through walls and stepped right in the middle of their mess. And looked at them and said, Y'all been doubting this stuff, but I told you all along this was what was going to happen. I had to die. I had to suffer. So now get up and go preach it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get over yourself. Yeah. You've got what you need. I've equipped you. I've empowered you. Now go do what I told you to do. Because when you speak my name, lo, I will be with you always. Even in the low places, He's with us. There's another one King. One Jesus. He is King. I'm going to close with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 17 through 19. Musicians come. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. And I could just go into Bible study after Bible study right here. What does it mean to be in Christ? Any man be in Christ. We're not in Him. The Bible says until we're baptized into Him. You can't escape the need to call the name of Jesus over your life in baptism. That's the only way you even enter into Christ. That's the only way you can be named. You can be part of those who are named with the name of Christ. Because His name was Jesus. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. See, the problem is, there's a whole bunch of professing Christians, but all the old stuff ain't passed away. They come across as hypocrites. They don't mean to. They have no name. They have no power. They're doing what they know. So we can either sit back with this great revelation in the name of Jesus and empowering of the Spirit, the thing that came to us and flipped our life right side up, and say, oh, well, you're young. But we can do what Paul and Silas did and Jason and just flip their world upside down. What do you mean I gotta talk in tongues? That only makes sense. Why I gotta go down in water for some? What's water got to do with? Uh, why I gotta get? Why I take a bath every night. Once a week. Doesn't make sense when you're living life upside down. All things are God who has reconciled. See, he was all over me today, brother. I was like, I just now went all home. Do got covered. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He has now turned our life upside. He's turned it right side up. He's reconciled.
healed us. He's corrected our upside down living. And now he says that because I've reconciled you, you have a responsibility to go reconcile somebody else. you got to turn their world upside down because somebody flipped the church upside down. i got to help somebody else. I can't get this to myself. i got a privilege to be in the kingdom of God and I need to pull somebody else with me. It's your responsibility. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God.
have to move from being a spectator to a participator. The Gentiles always stood outside the courts watching the Jews enjoy the presence of the Lord. Watching the Jews go into the holies and the holies of holy. Watching them touch and feel the one true God on the outside. And now we have the opportunity
God is what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Talking about somebody's world being flipped upside down. You ride up there next to God, next thing you know, you're head first toward the earth, plumping like a lightning bolt. He had his world flipped upside down, and it all started with pride. I will be as God. And that's the same spirit the world is pushing. You are a God. You can be like God. But don't get me wrong. We want to be like Jesus. But we understand that we're sons of God, not God. I can be a son of God, but I'm not God. And Lucifer was the son of God who wanted to be God. His pride God kicked out. You want your world flipped upside down? Don't get pride under control and your world will be flipped upside down. And every young man between like 16 and 20, our pride like soars to the moon and we know everything and dad knows very little and we'll wind up being just like Cain repeating the error of our father because all of us go through that little pride stage. There are times when I, when I was growing up that, you know, those things you hate that your dad did. And all of a sudden later in life you have kids and you find yourself doing the same thing that dad did. And thank God I've backed up enough to go, okay, let me see if I can do that better. I didn't like it any. Maybe I can do that just a little bit better. See Brother Keith jamming away like that. We're not trying to hype up the spirit. I'm gonna answer that. I heard that in the spirit. I heard I heard somebody think that. We're not trying to jam it. That's his way of worshiping. That's how he worships. That ain't scripted. We I'm not a forceful, you know what? I don't want to preach tonight. Let's just uh let's see if I can get the right song and the right pitch and let's just break loose. So I gotta reach. No, I want to find wherever vein he's in and get there and just stay there as long as I can stay there. Yes. But that right there is, for those of you who don't know, that's, that's really Keith's. That's his home right there. That's his, that's his place. So when he starts worshiping, the Lord starts like taking him like a puppet. Starts to like this. <laughs> and you probably haven't been here yet where he went out up on the floor over here. And the Holy Ghost, he, he's a holy roller. He, he goes back in the day. And, and he can get right back up off the floor and come right back. So no, we didn't orchestrate this other than the fact that we praised our way into this. You worship your way into his presence. So no, that wasn't staged. That was Brother Keith being an instrument. He scares me sometimes too, but I just say, hey, I'm pretty sure I look pretty stupid over here in my corner dancing up now. That's just his way of dancing. Amen. And you got your way. You know, back in the day, when you're kids, you're stupid and you make fun of people who dance a certain shout a certain way. You, come on, you've been in church most of your life. You made fun of somebody who was shouting. Come on. And, and there, there's an older fellow, and I feel bad that I ever made fun of him because the Lord has made me pay for it. But he had one of those two pages of rap. Man, the spirit hit that dude. And he started to bucking. Next thing you know, his hair start whipping and that little thing come on around it'll be like a whip. <laughs> First we made fun and then we moved. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, I've been in places where people got in the spirit and they, they were doing this kicking maneuver like this and I thought, you're going to hurt somebody. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to say how someone will respond to the Holy Ghost because I've seen it all. But I will protect you if somebody's going to whip you with their hair. So that's for the key's way and we all got our way. But you know what? I, I feel sorry for the ones that are so stuck on how Brother Keith praises that they're missing out on their moment. While you're watching him, you could be participating and getting your blessing. And then we could be making fun of you. <laughs> That's the way that works. <laughs> no, I'm so glad.